Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Many uh, skeptics have often used the phrase, we live in a rational world, and these things don't happen in a rational world. Science has shown us that there is a reason to be guided by, and yet you are a philosopher. You, you've spent your professional career looking at reason and rationality. Yes, I would argue that reason impels us to accept the phenomena because when you actually look at the evidence, when you look at the first-hand reports of the cases or experience them for yourself and look exactly at what's going on, when you consider why the appeals to the fallibility of eyewitness testimony are actually very weak appeals, mm -hmm. um, you have no choice but to accept the phenomena, no matter how they uh, affect your boggle threshold. And as I recall uh, from your book, The Limits of Influence, when you began your exploration into 19th century uh, first-hand accounts of very bizarre phenomenon, you expected to come up with a collection of interesting psychological oddities. You didn't think you were going to be convinced by those reports. When I set out in the field, I actually accepted what others who had spent more time than I had in parapsychology believed. Mm -hmm. And the received view at the time was that um, the only evidence worth saying anything about was the uh, conventionally experimental evidence, mm -hmm. laboratory evidence. Yeah. And that seemed reasonable because on the surface it seemed like, sure, these are cases where we can control and manipulate experimental variables yeah. and really get clear on what's going on. When I thought about it more clearly, and when I actually started to look at the evidence uh, for macro PK, and not just accept what other people had told me about it, mm -hmm. I was completely bowled over by the quality of evidence. And what I discovered was that the people who had very strong negative opinions about macro PK actually didn't know what the first-hand accounts were. They had accepted the received views of others who had relied primarily on weak secondary literature or were just expressing their own preferences for a certain way of looking at the world. Well, not only do you report that these uh, 19th century and early 20th century and even contemporary accounts are strong, uh, but you make another claim, which I think is very significant, and that is that we have learned as much about the phenomenon from the case history studies uh, as we have ever learned, maybe more from case histories than we have ever learned from experiments. Well, I think at least we have the potential to learn more from um, the larger scale work than from the laboratory experiments for a couple of reasons. First of all, the idea that we can control and manipulate experimental variables in a parapsychological experiment is an utter myth. I mean, there's no way to conduct a controlled PK experiment where you can make sure that only the official subject is using a PK ability and that nobody else is using any PK they might have to influence positively or negatively the experimental outcome. There's no way to do a, um, a truly double-blind experiment in ESP. The only information for which you can be blind is normally acquired information, mm -hmm. not telepathically or clairvoyantly acquired information. Your argument becomes horrifying because you could apply the same argument to other areas of research outside of parapsychology, sociology, psychology, economics. Is there any area that might not be contaminated by psychokinetic uh, experimenter effects. Right. I think that's another reason for the potential resistance to all of this, that people have an intuition that if we allow parapsychological effects in the world at all, they're not going to be limited just to those experiments conducted by parapsychologists. So, at least in principle, parapsychological phenomena could have been polluting centuries of conventional scientific experiments. Because especially if the phenomena are need-determined or interest-relative, mm -hmm. it's not just parapsychologists who have an interest in the outcome of their experiments. Any scientist worth his or her salt is going to be invested emotionally in the outcome of their experiments. Mm -hmm. They want to succeed. The only truly objective scientist, I think, is a dead one. 